Good morning and welcome to our Global Healthcast special brought to you by Global Health Press. Today, we will introduce you the Accelerate Volunteer Registry. I am Joe Schmidt and with me is Dr. Zoe Pana, Janina Leckler and Professor Oliver Corneli from the Accelerate Consortium. Thank you for joining us today. And my first question goes to Oliver. Oliver, what is Vexcelerate? Well, Vexcelerate um, is a large consortium, but let's start with the name. So what, what is in there? So we are there to accelerate clinical vaccine research. So um, to do so, we formed a pan-European consortium. It is funded by the European Commission. And we run studies within the consortium and we help and advise on clinical trials for other, um, any sponsor who uh, would want to run a vaccine trial. Uh, we can help with speeding the trials up and that can be done at, at different levels. So we are in the end part of the pandemic preparedness plan of the European Commission and the European community. So in addition to this doing research, clinical research, whatever types, you now have this patient registry, or I'm wrong, I, <laughs> you just told me before we started that it's a volunteer registry. So Zoe, what is the volunteer registry? Thank you, Joe, for the question. So actually the Vaccelerate volunteer registry is the first transnational, uh, in the reality, pan-European, uh, database uh, for the prompt identification of uh, potential volunteers uh, in uh, clinical studies, of course now with focus on uh, COVID-19 clinical studies. So uh, 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 it's actually an effective investment in the clinical research infrastructure of Europe, uh, since the suitable subjects can be mobilized within 24 hours. And currently, this sustainable and dynamic platform is already activated in more than 16 countries around the European regions. And currently, we have uh, almost 37,000 uh, subjects that uh, have been registered uh, on this platform. Uh, that is great. So if I'm a, interested in clinical research and I would like to participate, I will go to your website and then I can register. Is that right? Yes, that's totally right. So uh, actually, if we go also to the next slide, uh, we see that we welcome uh, all European citizens, uh, irrespectively of their age, sex, nationality, underlying conditions, who are willing to support this pan-European effort. Uh, and uh, uh, if we go to the next slide, you will see that uh, there is a very easy process. So actually, each one of us can fill in a very short online uh, registration questionnaire, which is currently translated in more than 13 languages. It will take just five minutes of our time and just to express an initial interest uh, for future participation. Then according to the eligibility criteria of the study, uh, this subject will be contacted by us via email and he or she will be provided with some basic information about the study, but also information about the uh, study site investigator team. Then the subject is independently and of course autonomously uh, willing to decide if he wants to further contact uh, the clinical site investigator team. So it's very easy. And in a way, if we want to summarize the process, uh, we are trying currently to interconnect public with the scientific community to foster, as Oliver said, high quality and large scale clinical studies in Europe. So basically you get the email addresses of everybody who is registered. And then if you are interested in a certain question in, in a clinical research question, you send out mails to all who are registered asking them, do you want to participate? Or you can, you, you, you tailor the emails to a special age group or to males or to females or to a country even, right? So you can tailor the request, is that right? That's the beautiful part that we can tailor based on the needs of, of each clinical study. That's why we said also according to the eligibility criteria of each clinical study that will be performed in the future. So yes, Joe, this is exactly- Great, so today is end of August, 2022. The question is, where are you with the registry? Have any subjects registered? Is there, is, is there any information on that? Yes, of course. So if we go on the next slide, you will see 
um, that currently the Pan-European or Transnational Volunteer Re Registry is active. As I said, more than 36,000 uh, uh, volunteers. Among them, uh, as you see, almost uh, 20, uh, sorry, 33,000 are adults, but we have included also uh, pediatric individuals, almost 4,000, which is also very important for our future pediatric studies. And for the data, the anonymous data that are collected uh, in the registry, of course, demographics, underlying conditions. And currently, since we focus on COVID-19 pandemic, uh, we collect also data related to uh, prior SARS-CoV-2 infection and prior uh, COVID-19 history, including, of course, vaccination. So this is an ongoing process. And uh, as uh, you will see, uh, we are trying to expand, but also to go beyond COVID-19 pandemic. So wait, are the children registered by their parents or do they register on their own? Of course not. So actually the registry follows uh, the EU and the national uh, legislation framework uh, also for that topic. So uh, in most of the cases, in most participating countries, uh, the legal guardians representatives uh, do consent for their participation or at least for their initial interest. Uh, to participate in the trial on behalf of their children. Very nice. So I trust everything is compliant and I know that Celerate has lawyers and, com and compliance officers. So this will all be done according to rules and regulations that are applicable in each country. This is all now the structure and how it, it is set up. My first question to Oliver then would be, how does it work in real life? Do you have any examples on results or research questions you addressed? Yes, sure. So we helped several um, companies, several sponsors to find volunteers more rapidly. And that was usually in the arena of COVID and, uh, and Corona, um, Corona um, vaccines. That was about 7,000 or 8,000 people who were connected to the sponsors or to the individual trial sites that were activated by the sponsor. And what currently is going on is, and that's just some recent example, what currently is moving is that we are looking for volunteers who want to participate in uh, the newer pneumococcal vaccines studies. And then here on the slide is a a recent example from uh, the first week of July, uh, there is that discrepancy between cases being reported to the government in Germany. And, and, and then you can every day see the updated numbers of what, how many cases do we have in the entire country. And if you see the numbers, it feels like there must be more because everybody knows quite some people who currently have a corona infection. So we thought, we would just test our Accelerate volunteer registry. So we did send out to 2,500 adults, or well, it was the age of 12 and higher. Uh, we asked them whether they would be willing to administer a self-test, an antigen, rapid antigen test. And we needed only a couple of hundred because there was a pilot and it was in the middle of the holiday season. So we really didn't know uh, what would be the turnout, but then 500 replied positively and said, yes, you can, you can send me a test and I will drop you a line whether it was positive or negative. So we did send out these by simple mail and, and received an email back from 419. We uh, know that seven of these were positive. And as I said, it's a pilot, but it's a, in, in general, in principle, it nicely works. Um, and we could calculate and correct the number of the, the true incidence or the true prevalence, I would have to say. That was a very nice example. It has been published. The, you can see the, uh, the uh, uh, URL. Ad hoc, ad hoc research and get results within a week or so, right? And you really get good data and this is wonderful. Absolutely. So we could, uh, we are very happy with this and we are going to repeat it to see whether the um, prevalence changed and how that relates to the prevalence that is known statewide. So we are going to repeat it, but with a higher number now that the pilot showed that it's possible. We had some certain, some learnings from this, of course, uh, but we were very happy with uh, 419 really answering out of the 500. 
for some, the test was broken because the mail system put a stamp on, uh, on the tube, so the tube was, was broken, so they were quite some. So we know, okay, next time we will take some other envelopes of these things. So, um, so yes, we are very happy with that. We could do it for, and we I really want to do it uh, for RSV, for example, or we could do, of course, uh, multiplex PCRs from these swaps. Then the swaps would, of course, need to be sent from the volunteer to the respective lab. Then, and, and we do have a lab network throughout Europe, so it would always be a lab not too far away from that volunteer. Wonderful. And I also understand, in addition to COVID, you have data or you, you, you look into monkeypox research. What did you yes. do there? Yeah, we just start, I mean, of course, monkeypox, uh, a new disease. So we wanted to know, uh, our first question was to our 500 clinical trial and clinical study sites that we have throughout Europe um, for pediatric as well as for adult studies. So we wanted to know what is your diagnostic capacity? What is your procedure? What do you do when a patient uh, arrives at your place? private practice or general practitioner or hospital. So what, what is exactly what you do and what is your diagnostic capacity? And the hypothesis is that there is a gap of knowledge in the diagnostic and clinical management because it's just a new disease for uh, European doctors. And so, so far, as we know, monkeypox was limited to the endemic regions. Now we can say that, uh, I, I guess it's, it's, it's okay to say that Europe is an endemic region or maybe it's pandemic uh, and no longer just endemic. Anyway, so we have that explosive number of cases. So we want to be uh, well prepared. And that's why we asked for the, the diagnostic capacity. Another one was on how many cases in children and in women and pregnant women have you counseled at your place? That was another one. Uh, we don't have a slide on that today. Um, so Accelerate UVAP is the name actually of the, um, of the uh, registry of the sites. It's close to 500. Um, this one has just been published um, yesterday evening or so. Uh, in the Journal of Infection and uh, Public Health. And you sent me the link and we will have this in our show notes as well. Oliver, this is great. So some really nice examples on ad hoc research with great impact that we can do. And the question to Zoe now is what are the next steps? What will you do to, to make everybody know what you're doing and to, to improve the program? Yes, uh, actually to summarize, because we have uh, um, prioritized, let's say, our basic aims for the future. So as Oliver stated, uh, we are trying in any way to support the Pan-European Emergency Preparedness Plan uh, in Europe for epidemics and emerging infectious diseases uh, by providing actually a sustainable uh, infrastructure to support and implement timely large-scale clinical studies in Europe. So the first thing that we need to do, of course, is to disseminate uh, this infrastructure and promote further what we have done until now. So currently, the Accelerate Volunteer Registry. <clears throat> Secondly, we would like to provide this infrastructure, which is actually a single entry point for volunteers for clinical study, uh, studies in Europe and transform it in a way in a pan-European cohort. So we would like to have timely uh, real-time data uh, related to epidemics, and we do know that we have currently, but we might have also in the future, issues related to emerging infectious diseases. So this is something uh, we believe that it's very, very important to build on the EU response if we manage to do it. And uh, uh, through this cohort, uh, we strongly believe that it would be more feasible from a practical point of view and from a time point of view, because in the context of epidemics, it is important to have live monitoring of pathogens with uh, endemic potential. So uh, a, a target number that we have currently is 250,000 volunteers. Uh, as we said, it's an ongoing process, and we strongly believe that uh, uh, we can strengthen through that way also the public health capacities among the European countries. Finally, what is 
we believe very important is to foster inclusiveness in clinical studies and equity. So we strongly believe that all citizens, all European citizens uh, can participate actively on this pan-European effort. So everyone deserves uh, high quality information. Everyone deserves to participate in high quality studies. And that's what we are trying. So uh, public engagement is also something that we would like to uh, enhance uh, in the following period. Zoe, you convinced me. And right when we finish, I will register myself, my family, my daughters and their friends, and I will use the snowball system to make sure everybody in Europe knows about this great activity here. This is really wonderful. Then my question goes to Janina. If I register, where do I find you? How do I do it? Uh, yes, Joe, we are very happy to have you as a new volunteer in our registry. Um, <laughs> if you would like to register directly, I would recommend you to visit the volunteer registry website. There you can find more information about the volunteer registry and the option to directly register yourself. If you're not 100% uh, convinced yet, um, then maybe you can start with the Accelerate website where you can find more information about who we are, what we are doing, contact details. Uh, there's an, um, a general email address, info at vaccelerate.eu. Um, whatever request comes in is directly forwarded to the colleague in charge and we will make sure that we get back to you as soon as possible. Um, we have, if you are looking for more information, a, a special website for the UWAP site registry. This is for clinical sites interested in uh, conducting clinical studies. And we are on social media, of course, as well. We are using uh, Twitter, LinkedIn and YouTube. Um, and we're making sure that um, here we um, give all the newest information about webinars. We are having a webinar once or twice a, uh, a month, uh, updates on numbers, on uh, new uh, volunteer numbers, new sites, uh, events, uh, st new studies. Um, yes, so make sure you follow us there as well, not to miss out on any uh, Accelerate news. Wonderful. So what we learned today that Accelerate is a pan-European academic platform to run clinical studies, research, whatever. And we've heard about two nice examples where it has been as a proof of concept available already. We have learned how it works and that the goal is to have 250,000 volunteers registered in the system. So do not hesitate. Do go on one of these sites here and register. I will do so right after this. And this leaves me to thank everybody for participating today. This was our Global Healthcast special on August 29th, 2022. You will find the PDF of the slides on the show notes and you will also see the links that were provided. Please like, share and leave your comments below. Thanks for joining us today. I am Joe Schmidt. I am Janina Leckler. I am Zoe Panna. And I am Oliver Corneli. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.